Hey, y'all. Hey. Oh, this shit is bright. What's up? Um, so, um, I just got in Minneapolis, like, mad late last night. Um, and in preparation, um, I got, like, this big-ass winter coat because I didn't really know what the sun situation was out here. Um, and then I walked outside the airport, and there was, like, white people out there in, like, short sleeve shirts. And, like, so I was just confused. Um, but I was like, I guess that's where we at. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so this poem is called Shark Week. For most of my life, I thought all white people were sharks. I don't mean cold-blooded or bloodthirsty or sharp-toothed or strong swimmers. What I mean is resistant to frigid, icy climates. Example, mom, why do I have to wear a winter coat outside? The sharks are still wearing shorts and flip-flops. Or look at that group of sharks headed to the club in nothing but crop tops. How they not even cold. Imagine a sea of pale, chalky thighs cracking in the bony winds of winter. Fishers forming under jean shorts, begging for the soft caress of lotion. Once, once, a great white shark with waves of hair tapped my shoulder in line. Would I be a gentleman and give her my coat? the audacity of white people to not wear coats and then freeze. <laughs> Out here at the function, looking like a snowman just to see Aaron Carter in concert. And still, and still, there's a whole week dedicated to sharks. It's called Shark Week. Really just a time to watch things die in their mouths. Good home training. When it is coldest, I'm always sure to cover my skin. Careful to keep my blood from showing. It's dangerous, and I know better. This, this might get me in trouble, but I don't really fuck with dogs. Um, like, I understand, like, the utility of a dog, but I just don't really trust, like, unconditional love. Because, um, like, my love is, like, so conditional. I don't, like, I'm like, the fuck is a dog doing? Um, and the dog say to the cat, do they take you for walks? What games do you play with them? Yesterday we played fetch. They threw the ball to impossible heights and I got it every time. They love me. I don't see you out here. You're too small to be loved. Watch me stand on two feet and make this wine noise. If I do it hard enough, they'll give me a treat or the scraps from their table or at least a laugh. They love me. I lick peanut butter from their skin. They parade me at dinner parties, roll over, sit, Stand, fetch, speak, be quiet. Good boy, they love me. I always clean my plates. And the cat say to the dog, I only purr when it suits me. At night, I climb the shelves and plot jumping claws first into their eyes. <laughs> Last night, their children played a game called Kick the Cat. You won't ever catch me playing dead. I've seen this house from all angles enough to know that we are both servants here. Let me own what I can. Let them clean my shit. Nothing will forget the taste of my hair. Um, okay. So this next poem uh, steals lines from Walt Whitman, Lil, Uzi, Lil Uzi Vert, 2 Chains, and Archibald McLeish. Um, it's a diss track to my senior year poetry professor uh, who told me that he despised hip hop and that it's not an actual art. And I was like, nigga, what? Um, it's, I feel like, like Butch Poets have like their like, uh, their like Ars Poetica. Um, so this poem is called Bars Poetica. <laughs> Bars. Um, God better be real. The nigga owes me. Spent eight semesters in the trap. Came in the game axing to grind and left asking questions, real rap. Know how many grammars I speak now? While you greeking up the weekends, I'm getting paper, trees. While you striving for truth, I'm dining on henny and globed fruit. Think I'm acting out? Bet. Only thing behind a mask is a mask. I skipped your section in class, so I can't tell a Caesar from a Cesura. What are those? Got wings on my fresh verses, and I'm bringing a message. Don't act universal. You couldn't imagine how I fucked the game up. Only truth is stay alive, get money. Now I invent myself anew every day. I'm fake as freedom, that ancient ate shit. You think I got time to be grateful I'm alive? Whackness. 
All my friends are dead. Click clack. They didn't pass the canonical test of time, but you did. Now I'm sunning you, bastard. I get paid off tickets. I'm the meter man. I know my meter don't scan, but I can rewrite a myth until I'm winning. Wicked, sinning, you stressed? Don't matter. Stay mad, I left you with the crackers. I got so many names. Your mother calls me uncle. These niggas call me Lil. Older poets call me young. When I die, bury me in all marble. Marvelous, I bust open the gates of heaven to claim that final hoorah. Timeless white light. Coming for what's mine, the saints gonna ask who I am, and you know what I'ma tell them? I was like, this track, fuck that nigga, that professor was trash. Um, uh, so I have a book coming out in the spring, May 2019. Um, it's called Pastricide. Uh, you can guess what it's about. Um, it's, I think for, uh, we won't get dark and we'll turn it up again. Uh, the idea behind the book is like it's about the, the sort of like the violences that precede us and the way those violences kind of interrupt the way we care for people in the future. Um, those poems called I Haven't Killed My Father Yet. I haven't killed my father yet, but I know love's brutal blade. Brown flesh turns yellow when it rots. I nurture wrath like a mother, keep it calm. Baby's teething. I want him dead like history. I heard long time ago ancestors made drums with their master's skinned rib cage. The hollow inside would echo like an endless mouth. I can't help but think of this. I could make music of his dying, could pass the instrument to my children, the beat of the kill. Revenge is a fine religion. Good God, his faithful fist. I'm a wicked son. I got my mother's stomach. He must have said, I'll never do it again. I swear, won't even think about it. My mother doesn't talk about him. Silence, a simple forgiveness. She screamed loudest when I told her I was looking for him. Said my eyes were familiar. But I'm young, a better body of rage. These days, my mother tries to plant flowers. She says, just give it time. Patience, that's one way to pray. I have another. I know he knows I'm coming. I'm his son. The day I was born, he fled. I chased. We both running. The, uh, the other day, the other, I don't know why I'm saying this the other day. This was like a year ago, but I say it like the, I say it like the other day to add some urgency. Like I didn't write this poem a while ago, but I did. Um, but the other day, a year ago, uh, <laughs> I was uh, cooking. I was making some mac and cheese, um, and like I was cooking, I was cooking, making dinner for my mom, and she like just ate, was eating mac and cheese, and she was just, I was just like watching her eat until she was full, and that she just made, I just like burst out crying for like no reason. Um, so this poem kind of came from that memory. It's called Preparing a Meal. If you follow the sink, you'll reach a stream, then a river, then the ocean, though no one in my family can swim. We'd all drown if it weren't for these four walls and someone's paycheck. Fear is the true animal instinct in a world full of broken hearts. In the kitchen, I wash the blood off a chicken's flesh and then off my own while the red pours down the drain. I fear nature when it isn't silenced by something man-made. I don't think of where the meat came from while holding its soft skin in my soft skin. It's hard to imagine the pain of another without being swallowed by it. When I was a child, my mother would starve herself so that her children could eat their fill. You know nothing of love until you watch someone go hungry for you. Even then, what do you know of hunger? I am a good person, I think, though I need the flesh of another to make it through the long, endless day. I don't believe being a vegetarian is any better. I slice the meat of an onion, and I'm overcome by the life it spills. An onion makes us weep because it loves us, though that, too, is a defense mechanism. I think beauty is when a person is so afraid of losing something, they cry. I'm in love with reciprocity. I eat, you eat. I starve, you starve. I hunt, we live. Home is where I only fear what will break through the walls.
for instance, my father hit my mother and now the door is locked. People cry when they see how meat is made until they want to eat. Then I dare you to stop an animal from devouring the whole village. Cooking is the only way I know how to care for a person. I'm old enough to teach my mother how to eat. When I make a plate, I'm saying, look, my love is so real, you can feel it on your teeth. I killed a whole family as proof. Don't cry. It's OK. We'll never be worth the pain that got us here. Ooh. OK. I'm like, just shake it out real quick. Uh, <laughs> um, what do I want to say about this poem? I don't want to say nothing. I'm just going to go into it. Let's turn it up. In casual conversation, the hood in me slips out and says, boy, look at you. The day you got into college was the first time your mother cried a tear that didn't hurt. You might have been too young to remember this, but the first time you had a cheesesteak, you hated it. But I grew on you. I raised you like all parents raise their children, imperfect and afraid, but damn if there's not food on the table every night. I watched your feet hopscotch across the pavement. I was there when you first learned to say your own name. Child, there is a difference between leaving home and deciding not to come back. College boy, I have a question. How long do you pause when people ask you where you're from? How many answers do you give? How do you explain the distance between West Philly and College Street? So many kids die on my block, so trust. I understand fear, but I don't got time for forgetting, for acting like memory ain't a conscious decision. Tell me. Do you claim your school before you claim your home? Do you think that will protect you? Do you think they know you like I know you, like I know your blood and veins, how you did not know shame until they taught it to you? To graduate is to pretend to have a dead white man's authority, and maybe that's what this is about. Maybe my approval was not enough, so you had to seek it from someone who did not want you in the first place. Young bull, I buried myself inside you, but sometimes the hood cannot contain itself. Sometimes it'll slip up and tell you to bring that ass here and let me wash your mouth with soap. You do not need their language to make your breath valuable. I told you when you was a boy, I said you'd be the one to make it. Now what exactly have you made? See, nowadays, now that you believe it and shit, I look in the mirror and think, who must I be? Am I just something you had to survive? Ain't I more than black and earth? What's in a textbook that ain't on my walls? What's in that classroom that you couldn't find in your mama's house? They ask you where you're from, and you say West Philly, the nerve of you, boy. Who is you to love me and not look me in the eyes? I don't know you anymore. You sit in that dining hall eating vegan chicken, taking selfies with white folk. Well, good for them. I'm glad they have at least one black friend. How many of us had to die so you could be their diversity? There's no such thing as progress. There's just looking someone in the eye and knowing exactly where they come from. But you don't remember the skyline. You don't remember the sky. Ain't that funny? You used to look up at me and think, wow, what an endless blue. I could be that forever. <laughs> can I, can I, can we get, I mean, I've already got, can we get dark? Is that cool? Yeah. Like, a little, like a little dark, a little sexy, but maybe like the opposite of sexy? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'ma just, I'ma just go for it. Uh, the, um, the first time I had sex with a white person, I thought my ancestors were mad. Um, <laughs> and then, no, I know, I know, shit. Look, look, we getting there. We getting there. <laughs> um, and then this, uh, this uh, in June, uh, I was at, I was at Cave Canem, and this other poet, Malcolm, was like, um, could some people be, be like, oh, the ancestors, they're like watching over us. And he was like, he was like, yo, okay, but if the ancestors were watching you while you was fucking, what would they be saying? And everybody was just like, damn. Everyone was like, everyone just like looked away. Um, the ancestors, sex, yes, poem. Um, so, <laughs> on top of that, I was also thinking about how like the language, uh, the language of oppression and the language of like sex like often become like so closely intertwined, like chains, whips, uh, domination, all these different things, like the language matches in some ways. Um, anywho, uh, this poem is called Desdemona. Um, you could also guess where that's going if you read, if you know your Shakespeare. <laughs> um, when the race war commences and the shells of bullets tap dance in the street, when the generals force us to choose sides, I will be your slave. Othello in the sheets when there are no more streets. Don't call me by my name. 
The soldiers will come for necks, spiking severed heads on antenna, blind scalps and Afro omens of dangers to come. My alliance all too clear. I nibble your ear and croon the name of your house, my lips tender to your throat. A bomb detonated south of here and I go down to give you what we want in your bed. You call for more, command me. I love being told what my body can do. I know the difference between hunger and wanting something to eat. I was once America's prophet, singing spirituals and mapping freedom lines between stars, falsettos praising the cool survival of dawn, all the while coveting the knowledge of masters, guns, and language. They had the guns, so I learned to tongue my way into the royal family, loyal to my new name. I understood the truth of captivity once I wed my captor, like the buck licking the barrel. How could the forefathers imagine what I'd do? How could Harriet know what would make me come? No, I am not my ancestors wildest dreams. I am much too happy here. Before the war, the marches and boycotts moved us into fresher wounds, each generation promising a new comfort to deny. I waited in the water. Now we've come to burning the dead for heat and not trusting the reservoir. Now the flags have flown their faces and patience has picked up a rifle. Now the players take the fight to the playing fields, kneeling to the tune of the free. Outside is scorching and here I am on top, lashing away. I am tying you to your bed frame because you like what I can do with rope. You say, choke me harder, and I nearly think about it. Okay. We went dark. Now I can go, like, light. A little bit more on the love side. Um, I was in Minneapolis the summer of 2015, um, and I, like, I don't know. Y'all ever have relationships where, like, you think, like, you're in love, and then, like, your definition of love changes later such that you don't know if you were ever actually in love? Um, <laughs> like, every time. Um, <laughs> anywho. <laughs> um, right? No, that's just, like, that's just life. That shit just accumulates, and you're like, who am I? What is, um... <laughs> Uh, so summer, I was in Minneapolis. I like, I like might have fallen in love, but I didn't say it because I was a fucking coward. Um, uh, flip side of that, I also think bumblebees are like the realest niggas of the animal planet. Um, <laughs> this poem is called Thank the Bees. This is also, um, where's jo Josh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my friend Josh is here. We live in Pittsburgh together. Um, while we lived in Pittsburgh, there was like we had we got like infest, infestation infestation of carpenter bees on like our front porch. Um, so there were bees everywhere, um, and that's why I wrote this poem. Uh, thank the bees. Somewhere on my front porch is a beehive that I've never found. The, bee <laughs> the bees fly close, but they don't land on me. I prefer it this way. What keeps its distance is never killed. I didn't see the beehive in the playground. I stumble into the hive and the bees poked six bloody holes into my skin. What happens then is they get stuck. The bees pull themselves apart trying to get free. To prevent future stings, I hold a bottle of lavender for breeze to a lighter and burn the whole hive. The bees emerge a bursting yellow and plunge towards me, but their wings melt quicker than their bodies. They see me walk away, new skin growing over the old stingers. And in the temporary brightness of candlelight, I traced her ear with the sharpened point of my tongue, and thus she learned all my poems by heart. In return, she says, Dave, you have soft skin and you're beautiful. I don't know what to say besides I love you. I try to speak, but I find my mouth is full of bees. My lips part and the only thing to fly out is bees. My breath is bees, my lungs are bees, my throat a black tornado of bees. Suddenly, I am beautiful and my veins are full of bees. She says, why aren't you talking? Are you in there? I say, I'm trying to think of the right words. I pull her body close, but the hair on my arms is barbed. She says, why do you always need the right words? I say, bees. She says, I'm leaving. I say, wait, did you know that a bee's sweetest honey is just its vomit and she's gone? I never said love but I could tell you how she takes her tea. I could tell you where the honey is. Mm. Fun fact, that shit did change, and like about a month ago, I said I love you for a first time. I said I love you first in a relationship for the first time, and like it was like a, I was like, oh wow, that, just do it, just do it, yes. <laughs>
or or don't or like be whatever whatever works. <laughs> um, <laughs> where do I want to go? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not like uh, scared like scared of airplanes, but like whenever I'm on an airplane, I always like. Like, I, I, I imagine every way I could die whenever I'm on an airplane, but it doesn't feel like an actual fear. It just feels like my imagination just, like, can't stop working. Um, so this poem is called Turbulence. I can't stop imagining my own death on airplanes. I buckle my seat belt and the propeller fly through the plane and slices off my arm. I look as my inside stream from the wound. If this doesn't happen, then later, the plane will fall slowly and smash into a mountain. I'm crushed like a grape inside a fist. My mother asks me to text her every time I board a plane. I never say I love you, only on the flight, then my mind begins the dirty work, visualizing how this could kill me. I read that flying is the safest way to cross distance. Safety requires the accumulation of knowledge. My mother learned my father was like two different people. His violence snuck up on him and neither of them saw it coming. In one moment he'd, he'd fill the fridge and the next, bam, his fist would come crashing down. A split pomegranate is how I picture my mother's scalp before the stitches burst open. I shouldn't say that like I was there. I was barely a year. It doesn't cost my body to imagine. Not really. I know the body is fragile by what I learned was done to my mother's. The price of a lesson to describe what happened so that it might not happen again. An SOS in the sand. He lifted her up into the sky and held her there, gasping, there it is again. I don't know what came over me. Sometimes you make me so angry I just lose control. The pilot loses control and the whole plane rattles. I watch the babies cry. The last time I saw my father was at an airport. Last can have so many meanings. Final, most recent, endure. Please stay. I stay ahead of all the ways I could hurt a person and fly off before they happen. The people I love say I leave and make them feel so far away. I didn't mean to do that. I worry that if I feel too much, I'll go mad and set the world aflower with something utterly unpredictable. Can you believe that? I am the stranger in the middle seat, bowed by turbulence, gripping wildly in the dark for your hand whispering, will it hurt? I don't want to die. I can see it so clearly. Sometimes this happens. Sometimes the arm latches out in a way in ways that feel almost instinctive. Please don't take me at my word. I always mean to say I'm sorry. I think I got time for one more, and I'm going to do one more. Um, let me see. Yeah, OK, I'll do this one. Um, poem is called Artist Statement. <laughs> um, that's the, the first word, the first line is um. <laughs> uh, um, so I forgot what I was doing here. I think I was trying to address some vague psychic wound that I haven't yet overcome because it keeps finding new ways to bleed. It's easier to find synonyms for pain than to imagine its opposite. The opposite of pain is healing, is laughing, is slowly murdering the source. The opposite of pain is the clean hands of a child, is a poem, that's a joke being okay with the world being the same as yesterday. I'm usually not trying to write about black people, or nah, or actually everything is about black people. I write when I'm too scared to phone home. That's real, I think. Home is whatever dirt holds my fam, and some days I mistake a poem for a shovel. Honestly though, if this wound is me, then bring it closer. I don't want the absence of pain. I want pain to be the door I pass through to reach other doors. Knock, knock. Hello there. I'm glad you see me now. I hope we never get over each other. I hope you live forever. I might.
Thanks, y'all.